In this video, I'm going to show you how to use IPFS Check, a debugging tool for IPFS. You can find this tool at check.ipfs.network. Let's get right in. So with IPFS Check, you can check the retrievability of a SID in the IPFS network. And there's a number of ways to do this. You can just provide a SID and it will actually look for multiple providers and then test each one of them. Or you can test that with a specific peer. In order to demonstrate this end-to-end, -end, I'm going to add a file to my local IPFS node and then take that SID and then put it into IPFS check. So let's start by adding a file. So I've added this text file. I'm going to copy this SID in and now we're going to run a check. Now this is going to actually find any possible provider and because we've just added this to my local node and no one else has it, most chances are that it's just going to show a single provider. Now we run the test and indeed we found one provider that is also working and in fact this is also my uh, IPFS node ID, you can see that here and uh, let's have a look at the results. So first of all it was able to establish a connection, it was able to pass the bit swap check meaning that uh, my IPFS node responded that it has the block. And other interesting things is that we also get all of the multi-adders of my IPFS node, including the ones that were successful in establishing a connection. Now, there are two successful connection multi-adders here because my node is running behind NAT, and so it needed to establish a P2P circuit, so a circuit relay connection first, in order to hole punch and then establish the direct connection. So that's what these two um, multi-adders are. You can also use the tool to test a specific peer. So in a situation where a SID might have multiple providers, you may want to test your specific node or a different node. And to do that, you can either pass just the peer ID prefixed by slash p2p slash. That's a way to represent a peer ID as a multi-adder and it will return also all of the multi-adders that were found for that peer ID in the DHT in addition to the multi-adder that was used for the successful connection. And in fact, we also see that um, this specific peer is also is advertising as a provider for this SID. The last example I want to show involves using a full multi-adder that includes an IP address, a port, and a transport so not only the PID. This is an example and the output looks very similar uh, to the previous one uh, with the minor difference that it actually confirms the number of peers in the network who've uh, also seen this uh, multi-adders and this is useful in the case where you not only want to test a multi-adder but you want to make sure that that is the multi-adder that is uh, visible to other peers in the network. This brings me to the IPFS gateway request lifecycle. So when you request a SID from an IPFS gateway, what the gateway does actually under the hood is a very similar thing to an IPFS check. And we can break it down into two steps. There's the content discovery or content routing part in which it essentially interacts with the DHT and tries to find providers for the given SID. And then there's the second part, which is content retrieval. So once it found providers for a given SID, it will actually establish a connection and try to fetch the bytes um, for that SID. In a nutshell, the DHT allows us to do two things. It allows us to go from a SID to peer IDs. And then the second thing is from peers to multi-adders to which we can actually establish connections. These are typically known as provider records and peer records. Okay, so to sum things up for content to be retrievable by SID in the IPFS network, provider ha record has to be announced. If there are multiple providers, each of them has to announce. The peer must be discoverable and also the peer must be dialable or reachable even if it's behind NAT as we saw in the case of my peer. So it needs to have a circuit relay reservation through which we can establish a direct connection. And IPFS check allows you to uh, debug 
if you're having problems, each of these different subsystems and whether they're functioning correctly. So hopefully that was useful and thank you for watching.